In this video, we're building a God Squad from scratch without spending any money, and to make it even more difficult, we're doing it in just 24 hours. I'll be grinding solo challenges, doing a ton of the gap pack method, sniping and flipping cards, re-rolling training, and just about every other coin making method possible in order to build the best team we can. The clock starts now. I started up Ultimate Team and immediately saw that we have absolutely zero coins and a 61 overall team. Luckily, I did have these veteran loyalty packs as well as a Superstar Welcome Pack and a Madden Machines Welcome Pack. This doesn't give us a ton but it's at least a few usable cards and then immediately we hop into solo challenges and despite having a bronze team these are difficult to do even though i'm on current gen but regardless this is the best way to start out when you have absolutely nothing to work with we got up to level six and we're unlocking level rewards along the way and when we backed out i had several packs to open from the solo challenges as well as leveling up we also had a 95 ncat jacoby myers from the madden machine solos a daily coin quick sell which we actually got 15,000 coins out of and then our season and three champion, which of course we went with Pat Fryer mode. So now that we did open up those packs, I kind of just want to generate our best lineup. We're already up to a 73 overall. We made basically a 10 point jump there. I think I'm going to spend some time ripping some get a player packs. And for every pack or card that I pull out of here, I'm just going to put them straight on the auction house. And then while we wait for those cards to sell, we can hop back into some solo challenges, start making an effective use of our coins. This is 24 in game hours. So I'll have a timer at the top left so you can keep track of where we are along our journey. Then immediately we hopped into the Black History Month solo because by completing other challenges as we progress through this video, we'll be completing the missions for the Black History Month players, allowing us to unlock their 93 overalls instead of just their typical 88. From this, I also got up to level 10. We got some decent packs from it, some solo rewards, as well as some level rewards along the way. And after generating our best lineup again, we were actually an 81 overall. After posting these cards, we did the free agency and the combine solos, and we actually leveled up our account to level 16, again, unlocking level rewards along the way. At this point, we had a decent amount of packs built up. It was time to open them. Soon enough here, we're going to be able to get into some of the much better coin making methods. This could be a big one. That would be awesome. 81. Ugh, that's not that good. Here's a backyard ballers player. 91 Richard Sherman. We'll take that. This one quick sells for 18,000. That's awesome. 88 plus overall free agent player. This is again from the solo challenges. This is going to be 92 Joe Hayden. With any NCAT player, I like to take a player that I'm not going to necessarily want to spend coins on to upgrade. A player like an offensive lineman, a defensive lineman. I'm going to go right tackle Tristan Wirfs. And if I want to buy any one of those players, we can. But now we have 286 plus, what is this? Uh, combine players. So maybe we can get another one of those guys. Take an 88 Chuba Hubbard. And let's do the next 86 plus. Literally anything above an 86 and we get an 86, which kind of stinks. And lastly, a 95 overall NCAT free agency pack. We're going to pick this Brandon Scherf here, right guard. So wow, we're all the way up to an 85 overall. And a lot of the cards we have in there are actually sellable. Now my favorite way to offload all the players that we just opened from these packs that aren't being used on our team is to actually build team builders instead of selling them straight up. I think you get a much better bang for your buck. And after spending literal hours grinding solo challenges, I want to make sure we're getting every coin possible. So we build some team builders, we open up some more gap packs, and then we hit the team of the year solos grinding these out. From that, we started completing some of our Black History Month players as we unlocked the full version of Lamar Jackson. We started seeing some more coin returns from our team builder selling, built some more team builders with those, and then we were able to complete the Aaron Donald Super Bowl set for relatively cheap. We lost about 60,000 coins completing this after we sold back Aaron Donald and his power up. But we were able to keep not one, not two, but three full 95 overall cards. At this point, I took a break. Since we're only counting in-game time, I can give the cards that I posted some time where I'm not playing to sell. When I came back on, some had sold, some didn't. So I posted the ones again that hadn't sold yet. We opened up even more gap packs. And then we took our bronze players that we didn't need anymore. And we put them into this bronze exchange set. This gives you gold or better cards. But in the past, I've had great luck where I get a lot of elites that can be used to unlock more team builders and just sell those for auctionable cards. I hopped into the campaign solos, completed the first few weeks. This got me up to level 21. We unlocked the Black History Month Najee Harris full version as another wide receiver option. And then we went to open our packs. However, it didn't go quite as planned. Starting with the pro fantasy packs first. Round two. Oh, this is going to be a good card. And we get a 91 tight end Darren Fells. I'm going to say that that's kind of a W. We'll take the Darren Fells. Honestly, if we get a duplicate of that last pack, I would be very happy. A 91 overall is definitely a W. 84, which is, ooh, a kicker. Take those four in our second round. We're starting off with a zero chill player here. 93 Buda Baker. I might have to rip some of these packs in general. That is awesome. He's going to play on our team for now, and then we'll probably sell him in the future. Let's go with these uh, gold or better players here. These are Nat cards, and of course... 
What, can I literally not open these packs? The answer is no. They were so bugged or glitched or whatever that no matter what I did, I could not open these packs. So now all those bronze exchange packs have gone completely to waste. The team builders we could have built, that's probably 50 to 60K coins that's just sitting there and I can't touch now. Now we'll do our 96 overall team of the year end cap. This is one of five or six players that we get the option to choose. We're gonna go with center Jason Kelsey. I know that's not a sexy pick. It's gonna fill a spot on our team that I'm not gonna have to worry about with any of these other cards. And if I want a team of the year card, I'll just be able to buy it in the future. Next up, we completed the Madden Machines Tyreek Hill set. We were able to post Tyreek Hill for a little over 265,000 coins, making back most of what we spent on him. And then from it, we got to keep 96 overall Xavier McKinney, Shaq Barrett, and Trey White. Next, I was hoping to be able to complete some of these 88 overall Ultimate Legends. That's a great coin-making method on Saturdays. However, the ULs that came out weren't so great, and the cards were not selling for very much. So we completed about one of them, sold it, and then hopped into the Super Bowl present solos. When we came out, out of the Super Bowl present solos. We unlocked our Kevin Byard Black History Month. Remember, we're continuing to progress through those challenges for the Black History Month solos, as well as level up. We're up to level 25 and have reaped the rewards of leveling up the entire way throughout this journey. From the Super Bowl present solos, we unlocked Ed Reed. We were able to upgrade Pat Fryermuth. We opened up some more gap packs as we can continue to sell those cards in the background and then hopped into the Super Bowl pass solos while those cards were selling. Now, I gotta say, in retrospect, these were not worth comparing. Completing. They just took a little bit too long, and I don't think the rewards were quite worth it. After finishing up the Super Bowl pass solos, we were up to level 27. We got Ladanian Tomlinson's Black History Month card and three captain tokens that we used to upgrade Lance Allward. Next, we hopped back into the Super Bowl pass solos. We had about 15 challenges left that we had to complete. And when all was said and done, we unlocked this Percy Harvin, which will definitely be a good upgrade to our team. We reached level 28. Now we're well over halfway, almost to two thirds of the way done with our time, but we do have a lot of packs that came as rewards from both leveling up and the Super Bowl solo challenges that we just completed. Let's go ahead and open these. We'll start with our four 86 pluses. Uh, no lights on the first one. It's just going to be an 86. 88 Jared Goff. 92. That's a little better. We'll take that. I'm going to use a lot of these cards to create team builders to put into sets. As our last one here is an 86 cam kill. That hurts, bro. Red iron pack here. And then we have a pro fantasy pack to open. And, ooh, 85, 87, 82. All right. Not a terrible grid iron pack. Nothing crazy, but we'll take that. And then we have one pro fantasy pack, which you never know. These can be really glitchy. Nothing crazy in the first round in the second round here's where we can get big money 80 michael brockers power up not good gold not good elite not good Ooh, that one was really bad i guess we'll go jack fox we're also gonna put lance allworth's last captain token into him so he is fully maxed out now after adding all our best players and generating best lineup we were up to a 92 overall and we still have about eight hours left we've got a lot of work left to do so i went back into my binder and started selling any cards or building team builders from the cards that we now were not using within our actual lineup sold Buddha Baker. We sold this Baker Mayfield Team Builder 2 that we made. We also made a Mac Wilson Team Builder 3 and sold him for just under 80,000 coins. We also made this Avante Maddox and then we ended up pulling a lot more gap packs. These packs were hot. I was getting 86s out of. I was getting power-ups that were selling for 5, 6, 7, 8,000 coins. And since these only cost 500 coins, this is all pretty much straight profit. This time, instead of selling all the silvers with our gap packs, we actually exchanged them up all the way up to high golds. I shouldn't have done that. I should have kept some of them at low gold. Now we've got a binder full of high golds that I'm going to find out how to offload in the best way possible using one specific set a little bit later on in the challenge. And a lot of them did sell, which is good because we only have like six hours left in this challenge. So I took a break, saw that some cards had sold, and then I ended up building a few more team builders in Trent Brown, Leonard Fournette. And while those were waiting to sell, we hopped into the Gridiron Forge solos because you actually have the opportunity to unlock a free 96 overall tight end, which would be a great addition to our team. After hopping out of the first set of the Gridiron Forge solos, we were up to a level 29, as well as we unlocked our Black History Month Derek Thomas. We ended up going back into Gridiron Forge, completing that entirely, unlocking the David and Joku tight end card, and came back out to see a lot of our team builders were selling, and our coin stack was getting a lot higher at this point. For leveling up, we also unlocked this 96 overall Delvin Cook, which I didn't even know was a thing, so this was a very pleasant surprise. And from Gridiron Forge solos, we had a decent amount of packs to open. We'll start with this 83 plus elite player, and this should be, okay, a left guard. I actually needed a left guard. Onto another pro fantasy pack. I'm pretty sure this is from level rewards and I think they just dish these things out like they're freaking candy, man. There's been so many pro fantasy packs that I've opened throughout this process. Gold in the second round. Come on. 82. That's the... Wow, this was a terrible pro fantasy pack. Onto our gridiron pack and then I do have high hopes for the elite pack. Those have been good for me in the past and you have a pretty good shot to pull something pretty crazy out of those. We start our gridiron with an 86 at Reed, 85 Azure and Jane's power up, 78 and an 81. Uh, this one was pretty rough. These packs can usually be 
top heavy. So if we get like one really good pull out of it, please don't tell me 283s is the best we're gonna get. 89, John Hanna will take that. Okay, so not great, but not the worst pack in the world. So with the cards that I just opened from those packs, we built some more team builders, a team builder three, a team builder two. And then I wanted to do some sets and really start upgrading my team. So we completed this Chandler Jones free agent card at about a net loss of like 40,000 coins. But we were able to keep a war 95 overall cards. We kept Carlton Davis, Emmanuel Ogba, Leighton Vander Esch, and Harold Landry. We ended up adding those players to our team and we're up to a 93 overall, but we're just under three and a half hours left. So I went through my binder and I sold some of the cards that I hadn't sold yet or that had just timed out on the auction house. We want to always be near that 20 cards to the auction house limit. Then we built the backyard ballers Julio Jones because we were going to be able to keep some end cats from that as well. We ended up selling Julio for a little under 230,000 and then we were left to keep 95 overall Devin Hester, 94 Pat P, 93 TJ Watt, and 93 Travis Kelsey. This set, again, just a very small loss, but to keep four cards from it made it absolutely worth it. And after adding all of these cards to our roster, generating the best lineup we were up to a 94 but i still think we can do better we have three hours left so at this point i hop onto the auction house and try to do some sniping was fairly unsuccessful at it and it was taking up too much of our time left so i went back to the tried and true gap pack method but this time with a different purpose not only did we get a platinum card which is a huge w now we took the high gold cards that we built from way earlier as well as the low gold cards that we had just gotten from the gap method and made these campus hero cards and once we made the lowest overall campus hero cards we put those into the team of the year exchange these we have the potential to get 92s out of. We have six of these packs to open, and this could have been so lucrative if we didn't get literally 685s. I mean, the worst case scenario, the absolute worst case scenario. Since we only have about an hour and a half left, that's not really too much time to post things to the auction house and wait for them to sell. So I essentially reposted anything that hadn't sold to date, and then we hopped into more solo challenges. I was gonna try to grind out the Campus Hero solos and see if we could take these down to the wire. You get 385 pluses and a 94 overall end cap from these, so I did think it was worth the probably hour that we were going to have to put into them. And it went absolutely down to the wire. It's time to open these packs and finish spending our coins to upgrade our team. Starting with the pro fantasy pack. First round is big on the judgment. Wow, that's a lot of power-ups. 83 in the first round, we'll take that. 80 overall, we'll take it. On to the second round. We don't have time to waste, boys. We have to spend 800,000 coins here. Small legend, team of the week, and nothing. We got 385 plus overall campus heroes that we can hopefully pull at least one, what, 95 out of it? 96? I don't know. 85 is not what we want to see. I'll spare you the drama. I pulled all 85s. 385s. And we got the 94 overall end cat. We're going to go with Anthony McFarland because this is an end cat and this is a need that I have on my team. Now we do have one team builder that didn't sell, unfortunately. So that's like 70,000 coins we're not going to get to spend. We have 770,000 coins and eight minutes to spend them. So now the goal of this series is to build a gold 99 team. And there's almost no better quarterback to do that with than a 98 overall Russell Wilson. I know we just spent a ton ton of our coins on one player, but a 98 overall quarterback is huge. A 97 Larry Wilson? Okay, I actually really like that. He is six foot and he's got 95 speed. I really like this option. We're gonna go ahead and pick up Larry Wilson and we still have over 320,000 coins to spend. Next position's defensive tackle and it's really not that important of a position. So I think we're just gonna go with the 95 overall Linval Joseph. Welcome to the team. I do need a better left guard. Let's see what's available for the 96 overalls. We only have four minutes left. We have to make a decision. It's not a huge upgrade, but we're just gonna go from the 92 to the 90. Four. And last but not least, let's look at wide receiver. 155,000. That's enough. We can pick up Wes Welker. Our slot receiver at 97 overall. I'm going to hit generate best lineup. 95 overall team. That's actually insane. And just like that, the clock hits zero. 24 hours have gone by. We built a 95 overall team completely from scratch without spending any money. But if you like this, I have a challenge where I did this for a week straight. I also built a God Squad in that video. Go check that out and subscribe if you haven't.